Joel, please meet your friend, Billy. This is Billy, the snake. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of Billy. Oh, you're so much happy. <laughs> Hi guys, it's a beautiful day once again and welcome back to Dexter's World Channel. I'm really trying my effort to harmonize these uh, two wild pets that we have here. As I've told you, we have here Joel. And Billy the snake. Joel, please meet your friend, Billy. This is Billy. The snake. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid of Billy. Oh, you're so much afraid. <laughs> this uh, Joel is really very afraid of Billy. That's why I made some effort to put them together and we will have some short bandings every morning so that they can live together. And I'm so challenge because these wild animals are really very hard to tame. I know that this though is afraid of the snake. Look at that. He's so afraid. And uh, I'm so happy because he can fly now and he can of course go to places now but uh, we are watching because there are so many cats also and I'm afraid that the cats will eat uh, Joel. Joel, here's Billy. Come on. You're afraid of Billy? <laughs> what I'm going to tell you about today is the harvest of our catfish. Actually, I have some problem about our catfish uh, babies because they're really carnivorous that I was so shocked to discover that only half of this catfish have survived. And I just don't know why, but actually my primary suspects are the bigger ones eating the smaller ones. They practice cannibalism. And this is the thing that I would like to tell you about today. at my stuff they are so busy now catching all this uh, fingerlings of this catfish and the purpose is for us to be able to catch some 2,000 heads in order to be sold in the pet store actually our buyers are there already waiting and we had an appointment by 12 o'clock today they're gonna get all the catfish and this is the start actually but I have some problem I must tell you that from 4,000 price population that we have placed in here we noticed that the number of catfish reduced into half we just discovered that we can only harvest more than 2,000 so there are more than 1,800 that are missing so this is now the problem and we have to address this one. I told you that per experience, my personal experience, 
when these eggs of the catfish are already hatched and they're already wiggling or wigglers, they will think about food. And the food that are available are themselves. They're eating each other. So the ones that will be hatched first will have all this opportunity to eat all the siblings which have been hatched late. So since they are really practicing cannibalism, we have to address this one. And one of the things that I adopted is to provide them with good food. But still, we have to continuously uh, do the segregation according to its size. Because the sizing will prevent them from eating each other. So this is actually a work in progress. I'm so dismayed that I lost some 1,800 heads of this catfish. And this is the reason why I dried up this tank. I am thinking about how to make segregation easily. Well, we are talking about thousands of these catfish and if we will count one by one, this can be a difficult thing to do. It's a difficult task. So I'm thinking about putting some net. If we will put some fine net and then the smaller ones can just go out and then the bigger ones will stay and then another size of the net, maybe that's uh, uh, feasible. Instead of counting one by one, there's uh, thousands of catfish. I'm thinking about putting the fry of this Japanese koi. We have plenty over there. But let me tell you that the Japanese koi tank needs heat requirement. They need to be exposed to heat or warm temperature. I just realized that the catfish are really best for this tank because this tank is cold and this tank is also situated here that we can easily monitor the activities of the catfish and I also have just discovered that if you are going to sell the fry of your catfish then you're going to raise them in a the shallow water because if they will be placed in a deep water then the chances of cannibalism is so high because they have all the chance to, you know, uh, chase the inferior ones. Because they all have the, the space and they all have the chance to eat the smaller ones. So these are the things that I have uh, discovered. And maybe if you have some suggestions or you also have the same experience that I did, well, you can also share and educate us because I would like that this channel now will become the platform wherein people can you know put in some knowledge and also get some information and we are growing together learning together so that we can perfect our our endeavors to have or to make good business out of our hobby So guys, I'm here inside in our newly built tank. And this is very cheap tank because I use this very cheap tarp as well. And like this first tank that we had, we have the width of three meters by 11 meters to be exact. And the volume of this water can contain uh, thousands of fish. Well, it depends upon your intention. If your intention is just to grow the fry and sell the fry to the market, well, we can put in some maybe 10,000 as long as there is a proper aeration and this uh, filtration system. And you will see here that we have this uh, PVC which will serve as our tube for our uh, filtration system. And we use here this epoxy to seal the leaks. Of course, there is a gap here because we made a hole as the size of this tube and then we put some epoxy and there are some issues actually about the epoxy but it can be solved by just means of putting we call this the lodo pandayan these are actually sticky uh, soil that we can use for momentarily for the sealing of the leaks and maybe you are in doubt about this one of course I have to tell you that if your fish will be put right here and you're starting to feed them, 
the algae, since uh, it is very exposed to sunlight, will develop and it will seal all uh, small leaks inside in this tank. That's why this can be used temporarily in order just to avoid some leaks. A little later is the algae already that will cover everything. So these are very sticky um, solid right here. And you will note that here in our place, we have this uh, clay. These are clay kind of soil that's being used for the clay pots. That's why in our place here, there are many businessmen you know, doing business about fabrication of these clay pots, even these clay jars, and this is it. So we can temporarily protect our sealant right here. Of course, this will not be directly exposed to the sun. And this is it. And this is not my first time to do this one. Before I started vlogging on YouTube, I already have some big puns like this one. And that's why I'm confident to let you see about what is uh, happening here because I already have tried this one and the system and it goes well, it works well. I expect to fill this with water uh, today or tomorrow and then as soon as we're gonna have this water here we will harvest our Japanese koi at the the mud pond and this will be the temporary holding area where we can invite our customers and they can just you know be here visit us and do some selections of our of our Japanese koi and this is the cycle of our business so I am now bent on expanding the market by means of, you know, selling on wholesale price basis by bulk. And I'm not anymore contented with, you know, selling by piece since there are also other pet shop owners who manifested their intention to avail of my fish. That's why I am so encouraged to do a lot of this breeding. And I hope that we can soon, very soon, master the breeding of different types of fish. You will understand that we also made an effort about the making of this uh, filter bucket. This is one big bucket for the filter media that we are envisioning to put in here. And initially I already have filed up stones right here. These are the ordinary stones and you will see that this tube is connected to the main tank and it has an elbow going down under the gravel and it goes here. So the water from there will flow in and uh, come out here and then we have, we'll put some submersible pump right there so that the cycle will be like this. It goes this way and then it goes back there passing through the filter media that we are envisioning to put in and part of that is of course I already have told you the potos plants over there you will see here actually I am very proud to to tell you about this because this is the most efficient and less expensive filter media that we can use these are the plants that I'm so happy to discover that it can effectively eat all the algae that you know uh, may be the cause for the bad bacteria development inside the tank and it goes well so far i've been using this for the past uh, two months already and it gives us good result So guys, we have an additional number of quails that are groomed to become our layers. 
and majority of them are hen. About this quail business, I'd like to mention that there are really some precautions that we have to employ in order to maintain the high percentage of our eggs. I mean, in order for this quail not to be disturbed, that they can always maintain the high number of eggs. What I'm talking about is the presence of the cats and the sudden noise that they can hear from the neighborhood. So I'm thinking about putting some sounds so that they will hear the music and they will not be disturbed by any noise that they can be heard outside. So these are the things that are playing in my mind because I already have tried this one. When you put music to your quail, then the egg production will maintain its uh, high percentage. And the reason for this is they're not disturbed because the music are pleasing to their ears and they will not be suddenly shocked by the noise that they can hear outside. So these are the things that you can also employ to your quail farm and you can also try this one. And if you have some you know, experience about this, you can educate us and you can also tell your experience about your quail farm. I said this because we had experienced the sudden drop of the egg production because of the presence of the cats and the construction of the building located just near in this uh, property. And there are sudden drop of this, you know, stones and even the shout of these people working. So it really had a bad impact, you know, to our quail farm. And these are the things that we don't have to neglect. And I hope guys that you are enlightened and will be encouraged by this video and you will also do your thing, you will do your business out of your passion for animals and I would like to make a shout out to our new subscribers, thank you for joining and of course the members of this channel, we are growing in number and I would like to you know, be thankful of your decision of joining this channel of course it entails a small amount of money for you to become a member but you just don't know how you have helped me especially in the encouragement that you put in in the comment section so i would like to see you in my next video and if you are not subscribed to this channel please subscribe because we are doing videos every two days now only here at dexter's world see you in my next video